Good morning. Please join us for worship this morning.
Hey, church family. Uh, glad that uh, you are joining us. Again, welcome to our online uh, service. Uh, for this week. And again, just a reminder, this morning uh, will be our drive-in service as well. So some of you are going to watch this at home, uh, which is great. Some of you are going to be out in the parking lot and you're going to see something completely different. Uh, But the same message this morning and we're excited about that message. That's what's most important. And um, again, just want to kind of open up with a word of prayer and then uh, we're going to jump into this. Excited to where God's uh, taking us this morning. But let's, let's pray first. Father, we thank you for this morning, and, and Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. Well, again, whether we're at home or whether we're gathered here out in the parking lot, um, God, that we're all in this together, and uh, we thank you for the church. I thank you for our church family. I thank you for the church worldwide, God, um, and that you're still involved, and we know that. And this morning, we want, we want to remember that together as we get into your word and as we worship you. We want to remember, Lord, that, that you are faithful. Um, that you are good, that you are involved in our lives. So would you please, Lord, would you lead us through uh, these next few minutes as we look uh, at at some people uh, who have gone before us, um, who you were actively involved with, who you loved, and uh, who you walked beside. And may we be encouraged by, by this and knowing that you walk with us and that you're right beside us. God, thank you for that. We praise you for that. And, and, and Holy Spirit, I just pray that you're there right now and that you would help me speak. So give us clarity. Give me clarity um, that your words would, would, would go out and uh, just be understood. And um, we love you, Father. We thank you again for this time. And we just give it to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, in preparing for this morning and, and knowing what's coming up is uh, we're kind of getting back, some of us, a lot of us getting back together for the first time in a long time, even in our cars, um, and thinking about what's been going on <laughs> in, in our world over the last couple of months with the pandemic, even this last week, some, some very tragic and terrible things happening, and, and living in a, in a broken world, um, and having conversations about this. Um, Over the last couple months, whether it's in the office or at home with the family or even on our Wednesday night live um, things we've been doing, um, one thing kind of popped up that that I want to share with you and where we're going to go this morning, and that's God's faithfulness. Um, Even in the midst of what's going on around us in um, challenging circumstances, um, God is present God is faithful, and God is here. And as we were thinking about this and talking about this, there's so many examples in Scripture, in this history, that we could go to. God working in the lives of His people. God present in the lives of His people. But one kind of popped out this week, and that's Joseph. Uh, in the Old Testament. You can read about Joseph in Genesis uh, 37 through 50, uh, his story and his life there. Uh, Joseph was the son of Jacob, and Joseph was, if you're familiar with this story, you're going to know this, but he was Jacob's favorite. Really, out of all of his brothers, Joseph was his favorite. This is the same Joseph that had the coat of many colors, the fancy coat uh, that his dad gave him. And, and, and you know from his history here, uh, if you're familiar with this again, um, that his brothers actually uh, hated him. That's what Scripture says. They, they did not like their brother at all. And it got to the point where they decided uh, to really get rid of him. So they hatch up this idea of throwing Joseph down in a well and they leave him for dead. Do you remember this? And so they, they throw him down in there, they leave him for dead. A little bit later though, they have second thoughts about this and they decide, well, you know what, instead let's sell him uh, into slavery. Let's just sell him, make some money. We'll tell dad uh, that an animal killed him. And they tore up his robe, put some blood on it. And, and so Jacob thinks he's dead. They sell their brother into slavery. And that's what happens. He ends up being a slave in Egypt and ends up in the home of Potiphar as a slave. Now I want to go to Genesis 39 here. And we're going to bounce around. This is going to be pretty quick. Uh, But Genesis 39, listen to verses 1 and 2. So we know Joseph now is in slavery. He's in the home of Potiphar. His life has taken a really crazy turn. Verses 1 through 2. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials... The captain of the guard brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Verse 2. 
The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of Egyptian of his Egyptian master. So, so here again, do you, did you catch what verse two said? The beginning of verse two says what? The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. Now look at verse three. It says this: When his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Um, Joseph found favor in his eyes. Uh, the, 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 even Potiphar noticed that the Lord was with him. So we see Joseph put in charge of Potiphar's home here. And things were going really good for Joseph for a little while. But then again, another um, twist of events here happens as, jo as Potiphar's wife was attracted uh, to Joseph. And she tried to seduce him. Now, Joseph did the right thing and resisted this temptation to the point where he even turned and ran, leaving uh, some of his clothes in the hands of Potiphar's wife. Now, what Potiphar's wife does here is she spins it again, and she um, falsely accuses Joseph of trying to take advantage of her. And Potiphar, obviously, is not very happy with this news. And Joseph now is put in prison so we want to look at verse 20 through 21 here. Okay, So it says this, Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, uh, there in the prison, verse 21, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. The Lord was with him. With him. Now let's keep reading. The warden said, or the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So I want to stop just for a moment. Have you seen a pattern here already? We've seen it. Verse 1, verse 2. Uh, there here in verses 20 through 21. Here again in verse 23. What's the pattern? Four times in 39, chapter 39, it says the Lord was with Joseph. We see that God was with Joseph. And through all of Joseph's life, and again, we, we, just, we just barely have looked at it, but we, we've seen God walk with him. And so the main idea this morning, what we want to do as we celebrate this morning, as we praise God together this morning, is look at God's faithfulness. And really, when you look at the life of Joseph, we've kind of made him out to be a hero, but when you look at the life of Joseph and the life of all these people, and even in, in all of this, God is the hero here. God is the hero. We want to lift our eyes to Him as we see Him faithfully stand with Joseph, faithfully walk with Joseph through His life. And right now, what we just read, Joseph is in prison, but who was with him? God was. God was. Well, eventually, when you read this, Joseph gets released. He ends up interpreting some dreams for Pharaoh, and, and uh, he gets released, and he becomes second in command of all of Egypt. Okay, talk about a roller coaster of a life, right? And you now he's out of prison, and we've got to understand even his prison sentence was not just like a, a two-month prison sentence or a six-week prison sentence at all. He, he was there for years in prison. Now he's released becomes second in command, and uh, is a powerful, powerful man. And again, I, I know this is so brief, but I, just, I want us to look at the big picture here. And Again, I would encourage you to read 37 through 50 in Genesis. But here's what stands out, and here's what I want to bring out. Again, is what we saw in chapter 39. Four times, right? The Lord was with Joseph. God was present. Now what's interesting is that Hebrew word for with means together with or it means by the side of. Now think about that. Right? Th think about that picture. I love that, that definition. By the side of. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was right by the side of Joseph. 
in that well, when his brothers threw him in there, intending for him to die in that well, the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph when he was sold into slavery. The Lord was right by his side as he became a slave in Egypt. The Lord was right by his side in the midst of temptation from Potiphar's wife. The Lord was right by his side when he was thrown in prison and he was in prison all those years. The Lord was with Joseph by his side. God was there. He was with him. And so in the midst of everything that we're going on, in the midst of our lives, not just in the last couple of months, but our whole life, um, we see God's presence. God's presence. And when we continue to look at, at our history here, um, not, not only Joseph, when we look at his word, the same God who was with Joseph was, this, was with the Israelites when, they led the, when he led them out of, of Egypt. Out of slavery, he was with them in, in a pillar of fire at night, right? And in a cloud by the daytime. Same God who was with David when he stood up to the giant and slew uh, uh, Goliath. It's the same God that was with Elijah on Mount Carmel when, when Elijah faced um, like 800 and some false prophets of Baal and Asheroth. Same God. The same God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they got thrown into the fiery furnace. And they looked in and they didn't see three men but four people in there. Same God. Same God was with Daniel when he was thrown in the lion's den and, and he shut the mouths of the lions. Listen, that's the same God in Matthew one twenty three that says the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. Same God who was with the disciples out on that boat and the storm blew up and he calmed the storm with a word. It reminds me of the song, the lyrics in that song, and the waves and the wind still know his name. Same God is with us. Same God that, that went to the cross was crucified, was buried in a tomb. Three days later, he walked out of there, bodily resurrected, conquering death. That's the same God. He is with us. He is by our side. And so this morning, we praise him for his faithfulness. We praise him for being present in our lives. I was thinking about this, and, and what came to mind was Psalm 139. And I just want to read a few verses. It says this. Listen to what David writes about God's presence, about, about uh, our Father. O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Verse 7, But where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will guide me will hold me fast. And it goes on from there. But what an incredible passage of Scripture. He is with us. Now, listen. We, we all know this, right? That how we worship, uh, or, or how we have worshipped, has changed a little bit. Right? Recently. How we have worshipped has changed a little bit over the last couple of months. But who we worship has not changed. Uh, things are going to look a little bit different, honestly, as, as we look ahead uh, with this going on. And, and they're going to look a little bit different for us for a while. But God is no different. Uh, Hebrews 13.8 says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He is still on the throne. He is constant, consistent, and in control. He is good. He is giving and gracious. The scriptures say that He loves us, that He cares for us, that He sings over us. We know that He died for us. We know He's forgiven us, that He's freed us, and that He's preparing a place for us. 
We can't hide from Him, outrun Him, outdo Him, outgive Him, or outlove Him. And we can't know real life without Him. He sees who we really are, and He sees us in our sinfulness, and He still offers to save us and invites us into a relationship with Him. He brings peace to our pain. He brings calm in our chaos. There's no problem or struggle or trial that we have gone through or will go through that is beyond His power. You and I cannot beat those things on our own, but He can. He's bigger and stronger than any obstacle that we will ever face. And in His great limitless wisdom, He has a plan and a purpose for your life and my life in our suffering, through our suffering. He brings all good out of those things. In every part of our lives, He walks with us. Where we go, He goes. And He is all we need. He is all we need. We don't need this building to worship in. We don't need our money and our stuff and our positions and our standings in society. We don't even need our health. We don't need our rights as Americans. All we need is Jesus. He is all we need. And we've been reminded of that. And what's so incredible is is He has made Himself available through what He's done on on the cross, through what He's accomplished in His death on the cross. He's made Himself available to you and to me. Despite our past, despite our sin, there's no sin that His blood can't cover. There's no past that you can't get past through the power of Jesus Christ. He is present And He is faithful. And we want to praise Him this morning. We want to lift up His name this morning. We want to be reminded that no matter what our world goes through, no matter how dark it seems to get, that He is the light, that He is present, that He needs to be glorified and lifted up, that He is faithful even to a faithless people. So let's celebrate that this morning. Let's sing to Him this morning. Let's share our stories with one another this morning with those who are lost as we walk out into this world and remember who He is and what He's done for us. And so what I want to do right now is just give you time to do that. I want to give you time to commune together. If you need to do that, share your stories again together. Lift up praises. Think about and name the times where you've seen God right by your side. And praise His name for it. Father, we thank You for this morning again. I thank You for Your faithfulness, God. I thank You for the, that we see over and over and over in Your Word and, and the people that, who have gone before us, who have lived before us, You present in their lives. And the people who were broken, the people who were faithless at, at times, people who were running away from You, Father, You grabbed them up and You used them for Your glory and for Your kingdom and for Your purpose. May we be those people too, God. Forgive us when we forget. Oh, when we lose focus, may we intentionally press into you now and worship you and lift up your name because of your faithfulness, your goodness, because you're right by our side. Thank you, God. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen.